Hi, good day to you. And in this video, the topic will be on nutrition in plants. Mainly, it's just photosynthesis. Plants, unlike animals, they don't move around to get their food. And for plants, they create energy by absorbing light energy to merge carbon dioxide and water together to form sugars. And using this sugar, they are able to create a whole bunch of other materials, which we'll discuss later. If you're into the chemistry part of it, it's just the formation of a lot of bonds, a lot of uh, C to C, C to H kind of bonds. And these bonds hold energy for the cells to make use of later for growth, for maintenance, for just to keep alive. And this formation of bonds, we call it a synthesis, to synthesize things, to build things. And they obtain this energy using light. And light, denoted by photo, and when you put them together, they call photosynthesis, using light to build things, sugar in particular. Let's dive deeper into this. During my tutoring years, I would always sing this song, okay? It's very embarrassing, so I'd rather that the expert come into play. So here goes. I have a water, I have a carbon dioxide, uh. carbohydrate. So essentially, it's just taking the carbon from the air by means of carbon dioxide and the water from the ground and you merge them together, you will get carbohydrate. When light energy comes into contact with the leaf, the leaf have this special pigment called the chlorophyll that is in a chloroplast recall plant cell in the first chapter. This pigment traps light energy and uses them to perform this process called photolysis of water. Photo, light, lysis to break something. So they are breaking water into hydrogen atoms and the oxygen molecule. And this oxygen molecule is released from the plant. That is where you get your oxygen from. This is called the light dependent stage. And the rest is light independent stage. Doesn't mean that it must only be performed during the dark. It can happen anytime in the day, just that it does not need the light energy. These hydrogen atoms are merged together with the carbon dioxide to give you glucose and water. The light energy is just used for photolysis. The overall equation for the photosynthesis is this. The overall word equation for photosynthesis is this. So for plants to do this, they trap light energy from the organ called the leaf. And they are especially adapted to be large and flat so that they absorb as much light energy as possible more efficiently. This is the cross section of a leaf. It is bounded by the top cuticle and the bottom cuticle so that water doesn't catch on to the leaf and it just rolls away. It doesn't add on to the weight of the leaf. Can you imagine that if a tree, you know, and they trap a lot of water, it is going to be very heavy to hold everything up. It is also bounded by the top epidermal cell and the bottom epidermal cell. Looking top down, you can see that there is this upper epidermis. There is this palisade mesophyll. They look like tall pillars of cells that are tightly packed. They have a lot, a lot of chloroplasts to trap the most light because it's on the top surface of the leaf. And on the lower half, you can see this arrangement is for the spongy mesophyll cell. Why spongy? Because they need to have a lot of gaps in between them for gaseous exchange. They also contain chloroplasts to trap residual light that passes through the whole layer of the leaf. In the spongy mesophyll, there's a lot of air spaces to facilitate fusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of the cells. It also contains this vascular bundle. Vascular means vessel. The vessels contain xylem and phloem. Xylem transport water and mineral salts. Phloem sugars. So uh, xylem brings water and salts into the leaf and phloem brings sugars away from the leaf because the leaves are the one producing the sugars. This is a common dicotyledonous plant and this vocabulary is just a name of a classification of type of plant. So it's like cats are classification of animals, dogs are classification of animals. Dicotyledonous plants are ones that produces beans or seeds that have two hemispheres, like red beans, black beans, so on and so forth. There is also monocotyledonous, but you don't have to worry too much about that class of plants. Plants absorb carbon dioxide from the stomata. Stomata is on the bottom part of the leaf. It does not get clogged with dust and water. If it's at the top, carbon dioxide enters through the stomata by diffusion and dissolves into the moisture the thin film of moisture and enters the plant cell for usage. Plants absorb water by its roots using the root hair cell. Recall the first chapter. Plants, they create the glucose. They have a large variety of different destinations that are shown here. As photosynthesis uses light, carbon dioxide and some kind of enzymes, 
a lot of questions will ask you to describe the effects of different light intensity, carbon dioxide levels, and different temperature on photosynthesis rate. A rule of thumb is the greater the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis because more light energy is being given to the plant. Do note that there will be a maximum level of light absorption that the plant can take because the amount of chlorophyll is limited. For carbon dioxide, you must appreciate that carbon dioxide is literally a raw material of photosynthesis. So you give more raw material, more carbon dioxide, the rate goes up. It's simple as that. I have a water. I have a carbon dioxide. Uh. Carbohydrate. Temperature-wise, a lot of more detailed, complicated processes of photosynthesis is run by enzymes, and enzymes are made of proteins. They are heavily affected by temperature, as mentioned in the previous chapter. If you have not seen it, you can click on the link that is shown at the top right corner now. Enzymes, they function with varying temperatures. From low to optimal temperature, it increases. And anything after that, it will denature and the rate of photosynthesis will drop. And that is all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and subscribe. Share it with somebody that needs to see this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.